let's learn about the TI-89. The model that I have right now is the 89, but not the 89 titanium. They are almost example, exactly the same. We're only going to run into one or two things over the life of your use of this calculator that would make a difference on it. Um, very first of all, let's learn how to turn it on. In the very corner, you notice that you have your on button. It also has a little ridge there so that if you accidentally put something on it, it won't accidentally turn on and use up your batteries. Now notice directly above that in yellow, your calculator may not be yellow, but what you've got is that this calculator has different function buttons. As you look above each of the keys, there's different colors. Some of them are going to be a green, some's going to be yellow, and some are going to be, in my case, purple. Your calculator may have a different color. Those are what we call function buttons. So if I want to get to that off, which is in yellow, I have to do second and then my off. Okay, what it is is that every function button makes that key have two or three or four different functions, just depending on which color you're looking for will keep you going on that. Um, we call the green one a diamond and a second and alpha. So I may say do diamond enter, meaning that it's got to be a two-stroke uh, operation. The mode button, when you push it, you're going to get a screen that says mode, and notice that it has page one, page two, or page three. I've printed off the screenshots just to make it a little easier for me to follow out with what we're doing. Hopefully you will have your calculator so that when I'm talking about this, you can hit pause and do the same thing on your calculator, because that's the best way to learn it. Okay, go ahead and press the mode button, and I've put the settings that I like to use. The very top one says graph. Most of what you're going to do, unless you eventually major in math, will be function. The current folder is main. If you ever make any study cards or download programs from uh, the internet, you may want to build different folders, but for right now, main will probably do enough for you. The display digits, I myself like to have it on float. It's very, very possible that your calculator is set on float six because I think that is the default. You probably, if you're not going to major in math, don't understand what a radian is, you may want to change that to degrees. The exponential format should be normal. Complex format should be real. Vector format, rectangular and pretty print. This is the nicest feature of this calculator is on. That's what makes a fraction look like a fraction or a radical square root sign look like a square root sign. Um, go ahead and hit F2 and that'll pull up your second page. Um, the split screen, split one app, um, just leave those as is at full and home. The biggest thing right here is the exact and approximate. The exact means that you're going to force your calculator to give you a fraction. If you hit the over arrow, your choices are auto, exact, or approximate. I don't like the calculator to choose how I want my answers, so I set it always to be exact. There's a two key stroke that if you get your calculator that it comes out on a fraction, you will notice on, if you hit diamond, enter, there in green right above that says it's little two squiggly lines. That means that it'll go from a fraction to a decimal. So even if you get a fraction and need a decimal, it's just a very quick on your uh, keyboard to grab that with you, what you need. Okay, go ahead and hit page three. And this is the one of the only differences you're going to see between my calculator and the TI-89 Titanium. It'll say desktop apps on or off. 
If you put it on on, it means it's going to show you those pictures. If you turn it off, it means you're going to see the actual keyboard that you're going to want to be at, which means you're going to have to go into menus. If you understand what those pictures say and want to leave it like that, you can turn your apps on. I always turn it off, but that's a judgment call for you. Okay, let's talk about some more of the buttons that you have on your calculator. You have a clear button directly underneath your arrow keys. Don't touch your clear button. This is different from a normal calculator. What you've got is your workspace is up here, but your work bar or your task bar is down at the bottom. You really want to look at the bottom rather than the top. Whenever you hit clear, you can access it again if you've hit enter. You can at any time hit your up arrow and go up and grab, hit enter, and it'll bring it down into the taskbar. So when you clear it, all you've done is you've taken away what you hit before you hit enter, and you'll have to re-enter it. So really try to avoid hitting your clear button, so which means how do you get rid of things that you don't want? You have two options. You have the delete button, which is your arrow. It always deletes in the direction towards your left. That then is what you would do. If you have to get it to somewhere, you'd use your arrows to get it to the point. Remembering it's always going to insert, or I'm sorry, it will always delete in front of it. Um, the insert button should be automatically set. The insert is directly above the arrow. It's in yellow. Um, if you go in to put in something and it is going on top of it, hit second insert. It will stay as an insert wherever you're at until you change it, which means that if you accidentally hit like second and you're trying to delete it, it will automatically go to strike over. So watch that. Um, obviously, you can move up and, and down is so that if you have something that's 20 problems before that, you can still go up and grab it, hit enter, and it will bring it down. Right now, because I made some screenshots for you, I don't have any actual problems in here for you to look at, but I can go up and grab them. Okay, let's talk about the negative sign versus the subtraction sign. The negative sign, very down at the bottom. The subtraction sign, that's an operation. If I have an operation, it means I have to have two numbers. Four minus three. That would be my subtraction. It's an operation. If I have negative three plus four, the negative is not in between two numbers. If it's a lead off, I've got to use that. So uh, the example is if I have negative three minus four, this one is my negative sign. This is the actual subtraction key. And you'll get used to that once you get into more of the algebra.